Hello and welcome to my Vivi Gamma graphics tutorial. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to share how to feed a stride texture into Skia. Uh, so in my previous tutorial, I shared how to do the opposite. So I was feeding uh, Skia texture into stride texture. So you had 3D scene control, but you didn't have control on the 2D layer. But so for today, we're going to do something opposite. To follow today's tutorial, you will need uh, a nugget called uh, VL Elementor installed in your VV Gamma. So uh, if you don't know how to install Nugget or if you don't know what Nugget is actually doing, uh, please watch my previous tutorial. Uh, what you basically have to do is just have to come to this page, VL.Elementor, and then copy this by clicking this button. And then I'll go back to my VV Gamma and then uh, Manage Nugget. A command line and then here we go nugget space install and then I'm gonna delete this something package thing and then enter and then you should be able to get the recent uh, nugget of VL Elementor installed in your BVVV so once you finish installing this if you go to the learn if you type Elementor then you should be able to see all these uh, Elementor related uh, node. So what we're doing today is uh, we'll need the renderer for the Skia. So we need to activate Skia. At the moment it's packed in this present box so we open it up and then there should be a node called renderer with this window coming out. So I'm gonna put this guy on the right side. I'll put it somewhere around here. And then I, I'll, I'll scale this one a little bit down. Yep. And then uh, for today, we're going to be fading texture from stride. Uh, so first of all, design a scene from stride. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to open up stride, unpack this one. And then once we have this, I'll make a node called scene window. This one open up a window render uh, for uh, stride, not for skia. So the one in the at the top is the one for stride, this one is for skia. I'll just leave it in the same size. And then here I'll just put a very simple box. And with uh, we need root scene. Um, and then I'll put a sky box light, a very basic stuff. Then I'll put this one here and then a box here. So now we should be able to see uh, a box inside a scene with a stride renderer. Oh, I'll also put a directional light just in case. Uh, directional light and then I'll, I'll add a node called group. Group. Group and then there's different types of group but I'll use the one for stride and then I'll group this light and the uh, sky box and the direction light here so that we get a better shader shading here. And then I'll press R and reset the position. Uh, there should be a way actually in key to mouse display. Yeah, now here you may be able to see my mouse here so that you don't get lost what I'm doing. Okay, so once I've got this scene uh, for stride, what I would like to do is I want to fade this scene into Skia. So what I'll be doing here is uh, there is a node called draw image, and this is a node. If you want to import, for example, a texture into Skia, texture is called image in Skia. So you will need to feed some sort of like an image right here uh, in this one. For example, if you want to add a file image or image, if you want to add a, how do you say, Draw image, set image texture from image. Yeah, there's a few different nodes, but uh, there should be a yeah image reader. With this one, you can actually read a image from your desktop or whatever. But we're not gonna cover this one for now. I'm gonna be feeding uh, the scene from Stride into Skia. So for that, we'll need a node called Texture to Image. So this one converts Stride texture as to an image. An image is something very general. It's it's like uh, how do you say? It's a system that we need to put in between to convert. What we'll need next is a from image node, and if you type from image, there is uh, this node, 
And what this guy actually does is it converts an image to an SK image, which can be readable in Skia. So I'll connect this one and this one. And then last, what I'll be doing is I need to feed the texture from stride into Skia, but with the scene window, it doesn't output uh, texture. So I'll need a uh, node called scene texture. And what this guy does, it, it doesn't show up any render window, but instead of that, it would just output a texture. So no window, but just a texture. So I'll connect this one here, and then I'll connect the root scene to the scene texture. So now as you can see, we've got uh, the stride scene inside the skier render. However, the camera position is different. So here I have control on the, on the window, but the, the position of my camera I'm controlling here is not uh, applied to the final result. What I need to do is I'll need to add an orbit camera and then connect this guy to the scene window and the scene texture. By doing this, you'll be able to have the uh, same texture on both uh, uh, scene texture and scene window. So now we've completed feeding the texture into Skia, but I want to resize it because right now it's not in the full screen. And there is a size node called uh, a size node, a size input in draw image. So I'm going to put this to two so that it fills the entire window with the draw image uh, quad that it's creating. Okay, so as you can see, I have control on the stride window, but on Skia window, I don't have a control of the camera anymore. And this one is the final result, uh, final output that I'm going to be using. So yeah, this is the thing. So in our last uh, tutorial, we had a control on the stride scene. So we had control on this one, but we didn't have a control on the UI. So we're going to do We're going to be doing something opposite today. And for that, uh, well, I'll just keep this one here. But basically, just think this one is going to be the final result. And what I want to do is I want to add uh, some UI controls that I can control the uh, cameras camera on the Skia render rather than here as a parameter. And for that, we're going to be using Elementa. So let me introduce a little bit about Elementa. Then widgets in action. Should be this one. OK, yeah, it's this one. So if you open this help patch out, what you'll see is this. So this is, as you can see, it's the Skia window, which we've learned already what it does. It's basically a 2D render engine for uh, VVV. And here it has toggle, it has bang, and you get all the controls. Or it has a vector too. So if you left click or left click, then you'll be able to move around this values. And then as you can see, if you if I toggle here, this one is the one that's operating the toggle. And you can also get the output as a Boolean. Or if you go here, uh, and then if I move this guy around. Yep, as you can see, the value is coming out from here. So if you control the UI on the scale window, then it automatically outputs all the values that you get. That's written right here. And this is really cool. Uh, yeah, it was totally creating this uh, Elementa plugin, and it's really wonderful if you want to do something related to UIs. So yeah, if you're interested in doing something UI-based, then Elementa is definitely the plugin that you should look at. So today, I think we're going to be using uh, some sliders. Uh, it should be, uh, yeah, there is a value slider. OK, so what I'll need to do first is I'll need to Elementa, activate Elementa on my patch as well. So this is the patch that I'm creating. If you type VL Elementa, then you should be able to unpack the entire Elementa thing and then uh, what I'll be doing is I'll add a slider. Slider. Uh, or wait, if you would type Elementa, then you should be able to see what kind of uh, widgets it has. And there's bang, circle, circular, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of them. I want a slider that only has one. Uh, yeah, it should be this one. Uh, so I'll add a slider. This one yeah outputs the value. 
And then I'll add a label here so that I can name this guy. And then left double click, uh, type Elementa, and then this one should help me join this guy. And then, then I'll also need a group on top of the draw image. So I'm gonna type group, and then here there is a graphics skia, so I'm gonna add this one. And then I'm gonna add group on the, on the left and then Elementa on the right. So once this is done, as you can see, I've already got a slider on top of uh, the renderer. And what I would <laughs> like to do next is I want to actually uh, let this guy not in the center, but on the left. To do so, I'll type Elementa. And then there is a group of layout. And here I will uh, add a node called uh, Columns. And uh, I think it was this one, no? Slider, no. Oh, it has to be a spread. Okay, so I'll add a node called spread. Spread, and I'll add a label here. Yep. And then I'll add columns to the, to the Elementa. Okay, so now I have uh, control to move out the position, so I'm just going to move this guy to the right, uh, to the left, and to the top. And this column is, I mean, the logic is really cool. What you basically have to do is, if you want to add another slider, then just co you can just copy paste this one and then uh, connect the label to the cons. And what this column does is it automatically just columns new labels a uh, new slider that or new widgets that you just added and you can also tweak uh this one widget version oh yeah, yeah. so if you want uh if you want a bit more space in between these two then you just have to uh tweak the widget version yeah you can also change the size of the slider if you want it to be smaller or bigger right now just keep it as as, as it is and if you want to know deeply uh into Elementa then just there's tons of really nice uh, explanation you can also change the color and things like that using CSS or whatever so if you're familiar with that kind of stuff uh, just check out uh, uh, the help notes so I'll name these guys so first of all I want the first one to be called X position because I want this guy to control the X position of this box and then I ha add another one for the second one, I'll just call this guy Y position. And then what I'll be doing is uh, I'm going to change the orbit camera to something else. Oh no, it could be this. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll just use the orbit camera. Or I'll, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll create a new one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so there is a node called camera. Uh, then stride camera and then I'll reconnect these two instead of orbit camera and I'll delete orbit camera so right now I'm not seeing anything and that's because uh, the camera is on top of the object oh by the way on stride if you press F4 or F4 what you can do is you can actually see uh, it from a third point of view so you can you know, preview the entire scene by just pressing F4 and this is really cool right now I'm not seeing the camera and that's because the camera is not connected to the root scene and if you type control plus then you'll be able to add another child entity into the root scene so if I connect this camera here then as you can see my camera is inside the box and this is the reason why I wasn't seeing anything when I go back again with F4 so you can switch between uh, preview camera and the real camera position by pressing F4. So what I'll be doing is I'll add, I'll add a node called Control uh, Transform SRT. Then this one is a 3D one, so I'm gonna be connecting this one to the view matrix. And then with translation, I'm gonna move this guy back all the way back so that I can see the how do you say? Yeah, I can see the box. And yeah, version to zero is okay. 
so what I want to do next is I want to connect this X slider and Y slider. Um, yeah, the merging between here is a little bit weird. Uh, and yeah, it's not this one. I haven't, I'll, I'm not going to be doing that carefully here at the moment. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to connect these guys here. But at the moment, they are uh, float and float. What I will have to do is I'll need to add a node called join vector three. And then I'm going to add the X to the first one and the Y to the second one. So now if I move this guy up and connect this guy to the translation, then I should be able to move the camera position. Oh, by the way, the vector Z needs a value. Yeah, it needs to be minus 2.50 uh, or something to get this camera behind. Um, so now what I can do is I can, from the UI, I can actually control the values and then move the position of the 3D scene. However, as you can see, I don't have the camera control on this side because this but and this one is the final output but yeah it's pretty cool right um, however I have some problems or not the problems I have a few things that I want to tweak uh, first of all the value is not nice I want it to be mapped be between minus one plus one or something and I need to figure out how to do that Oh, slider has lots of different values. Oh, yeah, and you can actually expose the minimum and output on the slider. So, yeah, let's go back here and slider. Uh, if you tie, uh, if you right click and go to the configuration, you'll be able to see many values that are hidden. And here, there is show minimum and show max. Okay, this is good. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Configuration, show min and show max. And then I'm going to expose, or I'll just move this guy all the way to the top. Or I'll just move this guy to the left, actually. And then bring these guys down. Widen up the group a little bit. And then leave these guys down. Okay, this is better. And then I'm going to expose the min and they both can have the same one, so minimum and maximum. I'm going to put this guy to minus 3 to 3. So by doing this, as you can see now, the, the element, the UI has the value between minus 3 and plus 3, and you can move around that just by controlling uh, this UI. And there's different, a lot of different things you can actually do. So if you go to element, uh, if you type, for example, color, I think there is a palette. Or maybe I'll just go to Elementa and then find a widget called color. Yeah, there is a widget called color uh, RGB. So I'll, t I'll put this one. And, and on cons, uh, control plus, so I'll add another one called uh, color RGB. And I think at the moment, uh, all they're basically just too big. Yeah. So now, so I'll add another group, uh, Control Plus, and then another group, and I'll actually connect the Elementa to the third one, uh, draw image to the second one, and I'll disconnect this one. And then I'll add a node client bounds widget, and I'll add a scale layer one. And then I'll connect this guy here. And then I'll connect, yeah, the beautiful parts for size to the column. Column spectral element the layout. And this one is column. Okay, so there's a few different types of columns. Okay, this is something that someone uh, mentioned on my last uh, tutorial. But uh, there is a node called column. And there is a node called column. But if you see here include the low level nodes advanced and this is the node i actually want for now so if i click this guy and as you can see there's lots of low level nodes that are not shown in the default but if you click here they just pop up and then i want a node called column and i want to call it column spectral 
Yep, and here there is an uh, input called size. If I don't see that, I'll just yeah, show size, and then I'll connect the clap pumps here. So now nothing is fixed, but if I move the position, the default, yeah, this looks a bit better. <laughs> Okay, so now I've got the color control and the position control here. So it's outputting the color that I change here. You can control, right click and change the R and the Bs here. And so what I'll be doing here is I'll change the color of the box with this uh, color widget. So I add a color material. And I don't need to, and I don't, I don't need the low level ones. So color material. And then I'll connect this one to the box. And then it has a color input here. So I'll connect this one right here. And now if I change the color on the widgets, uh, I can also change the color on of the box. Yeah, so this is basically it uh, for what I wanted to share for today. Uh, the rest of the time, I'll just keep uh, tweaking around to find out how I can make things look a little bit clearer or better. I'm basically going to be watching other help patches and tweak it. So let's see how that goes. result that I got so you can move Y X Y here and then you can also get the Y position so Z position actually oh yeah this one is a Z position and then you can also change the color by manual but it also changes the color by the Z position and I can also rotate by using this vector to uh, slider so what I basically did is I just added uh, the slider for the Z and then I map that value for the color because the minimum and maximum I want it to be minus 10 to 2. And I also added this slider 2Ds, so it's for the rotation. So I added that and with I didn't need Y rotation for this, so I just used X, Y, Z with X and Z. And then I called that one rotation. And that guy's right here. And just for the background, I also added a rectangle and a bit of transparency because if I put it on the top then you don't really see the visuals behind so shift uh, dragging down and then added a bit of transparency and I also added this style seat uh, yeah this was the hard part so it's been a while since I last played around with Elementa and I forgot how to change all the sizes and style of the text and everything uh, one is using the stylable processor settings and in default, Elemental doesn't have this component processor setting, but if you control plus, it's, it's also not in the configuration. But if you uh, press control plus, then you'll be able to get this component processor setting so that you can add some style seats here. This one is actually the one that's already here. It has some basic, not a basic, but styles in it as a style seat, but you can also create your own here. And another thing I had to do is in default, so when I was recording the entire tutorial, everything was just too big and I was wondering why that was happening. Just That was just because uh, I, uh, the common space was normalized, so I changed it to dip. So it got uh, more in the better size. And I also outputted a size from the renderer to the uh, draw image size because without this, the texture was really small. And now if I scale it up, it automatically just changes the size of the, text, uh, the 
draw image uh, thing, so it fits it always fits the window. Okay, yeah, that was it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.